Going back in the day now with TV star John Lyons, I said that right. John Lyons, John. Yes. You've been in The Touch of Frost, George and Mildred, been in Pantomime, yeah. Baron Hardup, loads of different... I said that right, didn't I? You Hardup. did indeed. Look, <laughs> we spoke off camera earlier, uh, I think 1964. You'd have been living in London at the height of the, the swinging, swinging 60s, 60s, the Beatles, the stuff, yeah, all that sort of stuff. But what made you want to become an actor at well, that time of day? I never did want to become an actor. I had never thought about it in my life. Okay. I was born in Whitechapel in the east end of London. So, yeah, I'm, in, I'm a true Cockney. Yeah. Born. It was all I want. No, no. Well, I did three years of drama school and I did elocution lessons every day. So, yes. But I was born uh, when I first went to drama school. I had such a strong Cockney accent yeah. that I had to do something with it, which I did. But I went to drama school uh, in 61 just by accident. I, I used to play football on a Sunday morning at a place called Hackney Marshes, yep. which is on Sunday morning, thousands of boys and girls, well, not girls, girls now would be, yeah, yeah. Uh, boys, and, boys and men would have played there. And in our little pub side, there was a journalist. He just joined us by the name of Tom Duncan. And uh, one Thursday night, after about two weeks, he suddenly turned to me, and I have no idea why he said it, as you and I are sitting here now, and he said, tell me, John, have you ever thought about becoming an actor? I thought, what? Never. Well, he took out of his a business card, and he gave me a business card, and he said, there's a new drama school opening in about three months' time. I think you should try that. I don't know why. I don't know what he saw in me. I have no idea. When did you get your first big break? Well, I know this sounds a bit pompous, maybe, but I left drama school on Saturday, on a Friday night and I started filming for the BBC on the Monday. Really? Yeah. What was that? In a series called Catch Hand. Now, remember, this is 1964. Catch Hand with an actor called Anthony Booth, who was the father of Sherry, Sherry Blair. Yeah, Sherry Blair, yeah. Yep. yeah. Um, so that was that. I finished with that after two weeks and then went straight into rehearsals of a musical called Oh, What a Lovely War, um, which they made a film of eventually. Richard Attenborough made a film. But it started on stage, and I was in that for the next two years. Wow, so it so, worked straight uh, away. Yes, almost immediately. I was so lucky. So so lucky. So you would have been mingling and associating with some big stars in the 60s. Well, Any specific memories? Well, right, in that Oh, What a Lovely War from the beginning, um, I shared digs for many, many months with Nigel Hawthorne? Yeah. Sir Nigel Hawthorne. Yeah. And in fact, Nigel came to our wedding wow. in 1965. Okay. So yes, um, they were from the beginning. Yeah. And then when I left that, I then went, I was lucky enough to get in one of the BBC's very first soaps, which nobody remembers, called United. Okay. And that was in 66. What was that about? Football. <laughs> Are you surprised? I sort of, I sort of got that. Uh -huh. So you must have had, you know, when you first became an actor, you mm. must have had looking at actors and some great actors of the day. I'm thinking about people like Richard Burton and some of the yeah. big American stars, your Kurt yep. Douglas, your, um, yeah, your Tony Curtis's and, and people like that. You must have had an era who you wanted to emulate. Well, yes, there was. Right at the beginning, <clears throat> it would have been not just for me, but for many boys of my age, James Dean. Wow. Yes, it yes. would have been James Dean. Yeah. Um, but as the years gone on, uh, and I looked at other actors, certainly on the screen and in the theatre, Spencer Tracy. Spencer Tracy, yeah. Spencer Tracy was yeah. a wonderful, wonderful film actor. Yeah. And he's only been eclipsed now probably by Anthony Hopkins. Wow. So I think so, if I'd have been an actor, which I would have been a very poor actor, I think, yeah, yeah. You know, I think my hero was um, watching the black and white film was growing up in the, in the yeah, 70s I and know. 80s was Errol Flynn. Yes. I thought he was the, you know, every man would want to be like Errol Flynn. Yes, uh, he, indeed. He, he was fit, he could, he could box, he could, he, you know, he, could, he was a very athletic and I think he was a bit of a ladies' man as well. I think he was a bit of a, that's um, a bit of an understatement. And I've just watched a, a uh, Netflix, I think it was a Netflix yeah. series, on, on Cary Grant. Yes. Superb. Yes. And a bit like yourself, he had a bit of an accent when he went to America, like a, a West Country accent, they couldn't understand He it. comes from Bristol. Yeah. Then he taught himself to speak greatly like you and went on to have a, a great career. Yeah, but he had the look. Yeah. He had that wonderful look. Archie Leach. Yeah, Archie Leach, yeah. Archibald Leach, yeah. yeah. So 
Do you know Errol Flynn started in this country as well? Yeah, I think he was from Australia. Was he from Australia? He was from Australia and he came over here. He wanted to be an actor and he started, would you believe, in Northampton. Yeah. In a repertory company. And he would have done Panto, Robin Hood, in North uh, in Northampton. Yeah. So And he was such a good looking man that was, eventually yeah. they saw him and they sent photographs over to Hollywood. Yeah. And they called for him and that was it. Yeah. I mean he's he's quite timeless, isn't he? He's yeah. got that face that could oh, yeah. get away with it now. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. So female actresses, who was who here who's here? Well it? probably would go back to Catherine Hepburn. Yeah. Without a shadow of a doubt. Um, was that African Queen? Yes, it was. Yeah, it, with Alfie yeah, Bogart. Yeah, yeah. But now it would probably be Meryl Streep. Yeah. Well, there's lots and lots of good actresses now. They really are. But you look at young people now trying to break into it. I think everybody, you see people on reality TV shows, etc. Yeah. You know, yeah. the internet's readily available. YouTube, they make their own channels or yeah. programs. Yeah. Starting out today. It's, yeah. oh, my word, I'm so glad yeah. I'm not starting out today. Yeah. When I left drama school in 1964, yes, there was a lot of work about. Yeah. Not only on TV, but in the theatre. Yeah. Um, there were repertory companies yeah. where actors could go for nine months, six months. It's like an apprenticeship. And, exactly. Yeah. And learn their craft. Yeah. That doesn't exist any yeah. longer. Um, and on TV, there was so much going on. We used to knock out well, all those comedies you mentioned. Yeah. Um, I probably did about one a month of those situation comedies yeah. on the buses. I, I did that. five of those. Yeah. Uh, George and Mildred, yes, I did four of those. Yeah. Um, mind your language, can you remember that? I remember that, yeah. Uh, here's yeah. one you nice never, weren't it? Yeah, oh, here's yeah. one you'll never see again. Yeah. Love thy name. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I did yeah. one. Of, so I used to knock those out all the time. Yeah. Growing up in the 70s, I keep hopping on about this. My favourite comedies were Dad's Army. Yes. Uh, and probably Rising Dam. Love, I love Leonard Rossiter. Great Richard. timing. And Porridge. Yeah. And it was you ever in any of those? No, I wasn't. No. I wish I had have been, uh, but no, I wasn't. Yeah. Um, certainly David Jason was in Porridge. He was, yeah, he was. But those comedies, yeah. John, going back to the 70s, those sort of comedies, they, they wouldn't get away with that now, would they? Because it would go to the defensive. Yeah, you but they're of their time. And yes. I mean, I've had a few comedians on this, this show. Some people think I'm a comedian, but I'm not. And they always say to me that offence is taken, not given in comedy. Yeah. And I think that's a that's smart way of, of putting it. So yeah, it is. Anything it is. you say can offend anybody, really, can't it? Somewhere along the line, yeah. Well, certainly now, yes, whatever you say. But no, there would have been things, certainly as I just mentioned there, love thy neighbour. Yeah. You'll never get away with yeah. that now. The other one. Alf Garner. Alf Garner. Yeah, Alf Garner. Just about to... He actually hated that role. He did. I read, I read somewhere. He did. Uh, I worked a lot for Johnny Spate, who yeah. wrote it. Yeah. But they were clever writers. Yes. Because the actual, the butt of the joke was the racist. Good boy. Who was saying outrageous things, racist things. Yes. But they were the stupid people. Yeah. And people and didn't really else. know that. The boy, it's very clever writing. Yeah, and that's why Johnny was doing it. Yeah, and it, it was the same with Rigsby. He was a misogynist. He was a sexist. He was a racist. He was a coward. There was all these characters rolled into one. The, with great timing. Yeah, with great, with great comic timing. And everybody was laughing at him because everything he was saying and doing was ridiculous. Yeah. But today they say, well, you can't put that on. Yeah. No, the, the, we, we need to see people like these yeah. characters, yeah. you know, to, to, you know, to, to criticise and laugh at and poke fun at, I think. They still get repeats in the afternoon. I don't know whether you know, but actors do get residuals. But I've got uh, the box set for Rising Dump. So. Have you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so we do get residuals, and I got one the other month. And if you go back to things like um, George and Mildred. Now, George and Mildred was a very British comedy. Mm. The sex star, the wife, and the hen-pecked husband. Yeah. It was one of those... Um, the scores, the scores, yeah. Postcards yeah. of the suicide. Yeah, yeah. Very British. I got a repeat the other week from Mozambique. Yeah. Mozambique. What do they make of George and Mildred in Mozambique? But they do. Yeah. So they do sell these all over the world, and we still show them again um, in the afternoons in this country. So yeah. they still go. Is that, is that like your pension fund? It's part of my pension. Okay, yes. okay. I'm at the age now, yes, when I get a pension. Okay. But all these little... When I say we get residuals, it's not much. Okay. Little bits, bits and pieces. Okay. Any regrets in your career? No, I don't really. I've been not only very, very lucky, I sometimes think to myself, I wish I'd have been a bit harder, a bit more ambitious. Or been James Bond. <laughs> I wish I'd have been more ambitious in my career. Okay. 
I'd have probably not got more work, but maybe better work. I could be wrong. John, fascinating discussion. My yeah, pleasure. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. Thank you very much. You see my mother at the weekend, who's probably a big fan. She watches the, the Touch of Frost. Good. Always got it on.